It's Thursday, the 30th of May. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and it's time for a 737 MAX update. In today's episode, we're going to be pulling together a lot of information from previous updates. So I want to remind you that the best way to stay current and qualified here in the Blanco Lirio channel is check your notifications setting by tapping on the bell next to the subscribe button. Oftentimes I'll get comments from new viewers regarding one video where the information that that viewer is seeking has already been discussed in previous updates. I'll add the complete playlist of 737 MAX videos in the comment section below. The 737 MAX fix is now going to the FAA and FAA Acting Chief Daniel Elwell, after getting a thorough tongue lashing by Congress a few weeks ago, is giving no solid timeline as to when the 737 MAX will be recertified by the FAA. Chief Elwell says that the FAA will return the 737 MAX to service in the United States only when we determine, based on facts and technical data, that it is safe to do so. The FAA is also taking input from international operators, but ultimately it'll be the FAA that takes the lead in getting the 737 MAX ungrounded. So today we want to look at some of the issues that the FAA may be looking at in their return of the 737 MAX to service, which may very well include previous iterations of the 737, including the 737 NG, particularly when it comes to pilot training and the runaway trim scenario. Boeing has completed their testing of the MCAS software fix in the actual aircraft and the testing will continue with the FAA in the actual aircraft, not just in the simulator as some other aviation sites have been claiming. In other news, Boeing CEO Muhlenberg has basically apologized and has admitted that Boeing did not get it right in the original iteration of the MCAS system in the 737 MAX aircraft. Now let's go back and do a quick review of what is the fix to the MCAS system. Now, finally, Boeing is going to do what they should have done in the first place and create a truly redundant system. Remember, MCAS is not a stall prevention system, as I so widely see portrayed in the media. MCAS is not a stability enhancement program. The 737 is inherently stable on its own without MCAS. The whole reason the 737 MAX has the MCAS system is to retain its single type rating so that it can be flown by pilots. Any pilot with a 737 type rating can also fly the 737 MAX. The whole idea of MCAS was to simply make the aircraft handle similarly enough to previous iterations of the 737 to not require an additional type rating, particularly in areas of high angle of attack and low airspeed. And a quick review of what the MCAS fix is as a truly redundant system now. The new MCAS system is going to take data from both angle of attack indicators located on the left and right side of the aircraft instead of just one single AOA indicator as was the case in the first iteration. In the first iteration it took data from just one AOA indicator and then would automatically switch over to the other AOA indicator upon the next flight. Now they're going to take data from both AOA indicators and if either AOA indicator differs by a mere five degrees, the entire MCAS system will be turned off. If one AOA indicator drops out completely, the entire MCAS system is dropped out. MCAS will now be only be allowed to make a minimal amount of trim changes. It will no longer be allowed to run the stabilizer trim down to the full nose position. In other words, they're going to greatly reduce the power of this MCAS system. It'll still have the ability to add a little bit of nose down trim in a high AOA, low airspeed situation, but it won't have the overwhelming power that the first iteration did. Now let's go back and review a critical moment in the Ethiopian Airlines crash pre preliminary report. At 3 minutes and 41 seconds after takeoff, at 054146, the FO, the first officer, asks the captain if he can try the manual trim. The captain agrees and says yes. And at 054154, 
the FO says it's not working. In other words, he, the manual trim is not working. He was unable to crank the manual trim. Now, keep in mind also, this crew kept the throttles almost wide open and the speed was increasing tremendously, making a bad situation worse and creating a terribly out of trim situation. See the previous update for the entire preliminary report from ET302. Now remember from previous video updates on this channel we talked about the roller coaster maneuver, a kind of a lost art if you will, a lost piece of training that was lost oh, way back when, uh, not long after the 737-200 was replaced by later models of the 737. A lot of early Boeing aircraft, they all had manual trim and they had this maneuver called the roller coaster maneuver. Let's go back and review briefly the 737 trim system and what the problem was with ET302. Remember the system with the stabilizer jack screw on the 737. When you're manually or anytime you're trimming the aircraft you are turning this jack screw and either raising or lowering the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer to trim the aircraft. If you get this aircraft in an extremely out of trim situation and have to manually trim the aircraft using the manual trim wheels, you are manually twisting this screw. If you are in a severe out of trim situation and you are pulling hard on this nut, which is on the leading edge, bolted to the leading edge of the stabilizer, that makes this action very hard. It binds up. So the roller coaster maneuver was created to relieve this tension. If you have the time and the altitude to lower the nose of the aircraft, relieve some of this tension on the jack screw, and then reel in the manual trim wheel, and then pull back on the stick to maintain altitude, and repeat this over a period of several iterations, you can get the aircraft back into a trimmed condition just like reeling in a large marlin or a large fish. This bit of training has been lost out of the manuals for years on all the later models of Boeing 737 aircraft. It's been talked about quite a bit amongst 737 pilots over the years. And when it comes to 737 training and stabilizer trim, and when it comes to 737 training and runaway trim scenarios, we typically, in the simulator, just do the what we call red box or memory items and hit the stab trim cutout switches to cut out. And then that tends to be the end of the procedure. And in recent years, we have, haven't gone beyond that in the procedure and spent much, if any, time attempting to manually trim the aircraft. Another issue, and I'm not clear of, is how well do 737 simulators simulate this binding action in the manual trim wheels in the simulator? And this too may be something that may come out of this investigation and the simulators may very well be required to uh, properly simulate a mistrimmed situation through the manual trim wheels. And finally in a recent article in the Wall Street Journal the FAA alluded to the fact that they may very well be looking back at the 737NG or next generation aircraft as well as the 737 MAX in their effort to unground the 737 MAX. Now let's go inside and talk about the systems and the growth of the 737 over the years and why the next generation or NG aircraft may be included in what may very well be some very vital and well needed training to be a part of the ungrounding of the 737 MAX. Here's a reprint of the old roller coaster technique found in very early 737 manuals. Would this have helped in these recent two accidents? Probably not. The crews simply didn't have enough altitude. But it does raise awareness of the 737 manual trim system. Here's an illustration of an out of trim system in the 737. The pilot is pulling nose up on the elevator. The stabilizer is trimmed 
nearly fully nose down, and as airspeed increases, aerodynamic loads begin to bind the jack screw located inside the fuselage just forward of the horizontal stabilizer. Here's a picture of the late model 737 manual trim wheel, two of them located on either side of the pedestal with a retractable handle to give you the leverage to turn these manual trim wheels. And of course the handle retracts so it doesn't whack your knee as these trim wheels turn anytime the stabilizer is being trimmed, either electrically or of course manually. Note also the stabilizer trim units just to the left of the wheel and the green indication for level flight or for a neutral trim position, trim to five to stay alive. Five units of trim is the neutral trim position on the 737. The 737 has evolved quite a bit from this early 200 model over the years. And what investigators are beginning to look at now is how the manual trim wheels have shrunk over the years. The diameter, the physical diameter of the trim wheels have shrunk. And the size of the horizontal stabilizer has grown over the years as the airframe overall has grown. In the early model 737 instrument panels, the avionics package located just above the throttles and above the trim wheels were relatively small. And this allowed large diameter manual trim wheels as shown here. In the NG and MAX series of aircraft, as the aircraft evolved into a flat panel display, the CDUs or control display units, the typewriters located just forward of the manual trim wheels, which is the pilot's interface with the FMC or flight management computer system, grew in size and Boeing's solution was to reduce slightly the diameter of the manual trim wheels, thus reducing a pilot's leverage in the event that he needs to manually trim the aircraft. Meanwhile, the size and the power of the horizontal stabilizer has increased over the years to maintain the inherent stability of the 737 design as the airframe got larger. Even though the 737 NG has a stellar safety record, it wasn't until the poorly designed and executed first iteration of MCAS in the 737 MAX that brought some of these other subtle changes of the 737 design to the attention of 737 pilots and the FAA. So what does all this mean? Even though all these changes over the evolution of the 737 were done within the constraints of maintaining a single type certificate for the 737 to save costs, especially training costs, it illustrates a lack of training and understanding of all the changes that the 737 has gone through, especially for a whole new generation of 737 and 737 MAX pilots. There'll be much more to the ungrounding of the 737 MAX as we learn those details. We'll report them here. See you here.